All right, in this video, we're going to talk about arachidonic acid pathways. Arachidonic acid pathways can be really complicated. Well, let's try to make it a lot of fun. So let's just begin with an introduction. So arachidonic acid is a fatty acid that comes from the cell lipid bilayer, the phospholipid bilayer. And that's why on the top over here, we have this cell with the membrane. And off of the membrane comes this spider. Arachna means spider. That's why we have this spider over here that's yellow with acid. The yellow is going to remind us of the acid on it. The arachna acid, the arachidonic acid that comes off of the phospholipid bilayer. The enzyme which frees the arachidonic acid from the cell lipid bilayer is phospholipase A2. And that's why over here we have this fossil with lips and the two A's that are ripping off the spider from the phospholipid bilayer. To help us remember that phospholipase A2 is what extracts the arachidonic acid from the phospholipid bilayer. But then comes along the steering wheel that's rolling, steering wheel that's rolling, and explodes the fossils with lips and two A's. To help us remember the steering wheel's rolling, steering wheel's rolling for steroids, is what blocks phospholipase A2. And that is exactly how steroids work as anti-inflammatory, because they block this step. Okay, so we have our arachidonic acid. What happens next? Okay, so after arachidonic acid is made, two things can really happen. Either we can go to the leukotrienes, or we can go to the prostaglandins. This side of the scene over here is going to help us remember the pathway to the leukotrienes, and then this side of the scene is going to help us remember the pathway to the prostaglandins. Okay, so let's start with the leukotrienes. So after arachidonic acid is made, it's able to go to the leukotrienes. And how does it do that? It's first converted to 5-HPETE. 5-HPETE. And I like to remember 5-HP printers. 5-HP printers for 5-HPETE. And this is through the enzyme 5-lipooxygenase. And that's why we have this lip over here with the X in it. These lips with the X. The lip with the X reminds us of 5-lipooxygenase. So just imagine this in your head. I know this is really weird, but imagine a spider with acid, this spider with acid over here, being converted into 5 HP printers through this enzyme, 5 lipooxygenase. And to help us remember that xylutin is the enzyme which blocks this conversion, we'll have this Z that weighs a ton smashing the lips with the X. The lips with the X being smashed by the Z that weighs a ton is going to help us remember that xylutin is what inhibits lipooxygenase. Okay, after the 5 HP printers are made, we're up to our next step, the leukotrienes. So imagine these 5 HP printers falling down and turning into these guys. These guys' names are Luke. You see this guy over here? He's Luke. And he likes to stand in a triangle. Luke that stands in a triangle for leukotriene. And there are different leukotrienes that we need to be aware of. Over here we see that there are 4 Bs around Luke. 4 Bs around Luke for leukotriene B4. 4 Bs for B4. LTB4. And if you'll notice, there are a lot of nachos around him coming towards him. A lot of nachos to help us remember that LTB4 is responsible for neutrophil chemotaxis. So an increase in LTB4 is going to lead to the recruitment of lots of neutrophils. Over here we have Luke with the C, D, and E to help us remember that LTC4, LTD4, and LTE4 in ABC order, C, D, E. And the reason why there's so much broccoli over here that's getting really thin is to help us remember the increase in bronchial tone which this, these leukotrienes are responsible for. But they're being smashed by the mountain with the safari fur on it to help us remember Zephyrlocast. These are selective antagonists of these leukotrienes. Okay, arachidonic acid can also be converted into prostaglandins, and that's through the coxes, cox1 and cox2. That's why we have these two cox over here, cox1 and cox2, to help us remember that cox1 and cox2 are responsible for the conversion of arachidonic acid to the prostaglandins. First, cox1 and cox2 convert arachidonic acid to the cyclic endoperoxides, and that's why I have this cyclic ends over here, the cyclic ends over here, to help us remember the cyclic endoperoxides. I'm not going to get into the details of aspirin and the NSAIDs inhibiting this step, but just to help us remember that the aspirin and the NSAIDs are responsible for blocking this step, we'll have the NSAID and the medicine trying to stop this step to help us remember that the NSAIDs and aspirin are responsible for blocking the COX-1 and COX-2. Now imagine the N's falling down onto these three rooms, and these are going to help us remember the conversion of the cyclic endoperoxides to the prostaglandins, the, to the prostacyclins, and thromboxane. Let's begin over here. So here we have this cyclist over here, the pi cycling, the pi cycling for prostocyclin. And he notices that a pipe in this room gets really big. A pipe gets really big, a red pipe. This pipe over here getting really big is going to help us remember the vasodilation. And all these plates in the room get separated and they get one of them gets flown out the window to help us remember the decreased platelet aggregation. It prevents platelet aggregation. So again, the pi cycling for prostocyclin leads to decreased platelet aggregation 
and vasodilation. Then we notice these guys, the P's that are glad. P's that are glad for prostaglandins. And there's PGE1, PGE2, and PGF2 alpha. Over here we have PGE1. This P that's glad is in a minus of prostaglandin 1. And you'll note that the vasodilation over here extends into this room to help us remember that PGE1 is associated with a decreased vascular tone and vasodilation. But under these guys over here, under these two P's that are glad, PGE2 and PGF alpha, we notice the uterus and the uterine tone is increasing. That's why she's getting a little upset. She's getting a little bit of contraction. This to help us remember that PGE2 and PGE2 alpha are associated with an increase in the uterine tone. Finally, we get up to the trombone over here in the shoes. Trombone in the shoes for thromboxin A2. And we notice that in this room, the pipe got very thin to help us remember the vasoconstriction. There's tons of these plates aggregating now around the pipe. I don't know why, but the plates aggregating is going to help us remember the platelet aggregation. We also note again the broccoli constricting to help us remember the bronchoconstriction. All right, I hope you enjoyed this scene on arachidonic acid pathways. Let me know if you need anything. Be in touch, leave your comments, and take care.